Today we're reacting to some creepy TikTok videos. Let's get into it. I'm sorry, what is happening in the UK? What? Nah, 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 nah. Now, I've seen a lot of people saying this could be Rishi Sunak doing this, so yeah, let me know your thoughts. Who knows? So, apparently the UK could literally become an ice block next year. I'm sorry? So apparently we are approaching a huge global climate change tipping point, essentially, which will change everything. Now, according to research done, this big change could be coming from next year. Powerful ocean currents which bring warmth to the northern hemisphere are basically going. And due to melting glaciers, these could just stop completely. So if this did happen, we would literally be living like something straight out of a film, like The Day After Tomorrow, or Flipping Snowpiercer. Brilliant. But of course, scientists have said that this could cause catastrophic impacts to life if it does happen. Of course, bringing freezing temperatures to Europe, food shortages, water shortages, power outages, it would be f absolutely flipping freezing like we're in the Arctic or something. Disaster. But then we would have more extreme heat waves in the summer. So yeah, maybe it's worth it. But yeah, this could happen. Is it going to happen? Probably not, is it? Probably not. But yeah, hit that follow button. I'll keep you updated. I hope the best for UK because that's pretty scary to hear about. I don't want to fall under that category of a doomsday prepper. But at moments like this, I think it's a scare tactic to make people or to encourage people to like stock up on canned goods, heating supplies, just a bunch of survivability items. And it could either be marketing or you need to really be prepared. I personally am the type of person when I hear things like this, I always prepare myself like I have canned goods. I always go to the store and get extra canned goods or I can my own food and or get heating supplies and things like that because this isn't something you want to get stuck in if that's the case. I started with a nice crystal to begin with. I wrapped it in a coil, metal coil. I sent it to crystal and I poured this aqua color and I waited for it to harden. Then when it hardened, I poured some more resin and I started putting in these brass shavings and metal shavings and layered them in there. Brass is hard to come by. And if you do come by it, it's expensive because it looks gold-like with the black steel shavings. Makes it look very nice, the gold and the black. But it's not necessary. That's aesthetic reasons. It has nothing to do with the energy that comes off that. You can use just any kind of metal shavings and it will achieve the same effect. But it won't perhaps look as pleasing as it does here. Into this metal matrix, I put in pinches of rose quartz and pinches of amethyst and then larger crystals and shungite and I'd cover it with some more resin and more metal and more crystals. I have so many different types of crystals, all sizes, and they all get buried inside here. No one needs to worry that there are not enough crystals in, in the Oregon generators. There's more than enough in all of them. Then I finally get to the top. I take one of these, which is quite powerful in themselves and I bury it, I center it in here and it anchors this one at the top and then I add two more different crystals here, this carnelian, a garnet. Oh, there's so many crystals in here. This is a very powerful orgone generator. I'm interested in these orgone generators. I had a video yesterday showcasing the orgonite pyramids. And it's a funny story because in the other video, uh, the individual was talking about how they can make your dreams more vivid. And boy, let me tell you something. Last night, I had one of the weirdest dreams that I'm the kind of person I don't dream. I, I, if I dream, I have absolutely no memory of it. And I don't take any of my pyramids out of this room. But my wife... She has one as well, and I was not aware where she had it. She has it on her nightstand, and I really think it affected me because, let me tell you, that dream was wild. Uh, I don't really want to go into the specifics of it, but I definitely dreamt, and I remember it very clearly. So you think Saturn is 790 million miles away from Earth, and you can see it with your bare eyes up in the sky? That's interesting. Well, not only is it supposedly 792 million miles away, but the sun is supposedly 1,200 times bigger than Saturn. You can fit 1,256 Saturn-sized planets in the sun if the sun were hollow. You need to remember this. 
So they tell us the sun is 1,200 times bigger than Saturn. 1,200 times bigger than Saturn. And it's only 93 million miles away compared to Saturn being 790 million miles away. But if you put a solar flare over the sun, they look exactly the same size. Exactly the same size. And I'm going to show you. First, I just want to show you with a photo. Okay, this is what the sun looks like when you put a solar flare over it. And if you've looked up in the night sky, you can see Saturn. Maybe not the rings, but when you zoom in just a little, you can see the rings. But Saturn looks this size to the naked eye. And I want to show you with a video here. So let's first look at the sun. We've all seen it in the sky, but not many of us have seen it with a solar filter. And look how small the sun looks when you put a solar filter on it. It's tiny, and it is close. It is not 93 million miles away. Now Saturn zoomed in just a tiny bit, but it is very visible with the naked eye. You can see it anytime it's out. So I just need to break this down for you. I need to summarize it. The sun, which is supposed to be 1,200 times bigger than Saturn, so way bigger than Saturn, is also almost 10 times closer to us. So the sun should be this ginormous thing. It's a thousand times bigger and way closer. Yet Saturn is with the solar flare is the exact same size, guys. Things don't add up. And when you peel back the onion and you look down and you see that things don't add up over and over and over and over again, how much is it going to take for things to not add up for you to open your mind to the fact that you've been lied to about what's up in the sky your whole life? Seek truth, guys, because it's there. All you got to do is want to find it. And I'm not sure if this individual is potentially trolling the conspiracy community or not. It's hard to explain, but I feel like he's trolling. I think that's his whole... I think that's his whole thing on TikTok. I'm not 100% sure, but I just feel like a lot of his information is so not right. I don't know. Something about this just doesn't quite add up for me. Uh, leave a comment down below. Maybe you can further better explain it because what he's talking about just, it just doesn't click for me personally. Man Fastest man-made object in the world. Would you um, have a guess? A bullet. Yeah, I guess. A bullet? A missile. A sorts. cannon. A missile? I'll guess a satellite. Yeah, a satellite. A satellite. Like a, a space probe? I yeah, so it's going like 13,000 miles an hour. Okay, so this is going to blow your mind. Okay. okay, so the fastest man-made object in the world isn't any of those things, and it's also the first man-made object to ever enter space. This, okay. we sent something to space before Sputnik. Okay. Okay, so here's what's the deal. So you're thinking, fastest man-made object, yes, we have rockets, we have NASA, uh, um, Air Force has something that goes like 4,000 miles an hour, a plane. And then NASA has something that goes 7,000. Then the space shuttle goes 17,000 miles per hour. Okay. Something that we've made that goes 150,000 miles per hour. But I guarantee you've never heard of it because it's a manhole cover. So in 1957, they're doing a ton of nuclear testing, right? They're, you know, in Nevada, and they've just got this huge field. And they did one where they dug this tunnel that was three feet wide and about 400 feet deep. Oh, my gosh. Right? So they're going to blow this nuclear bomb. They're testing. But on top of this tube, this form, they have just a manhole cover. That shot into space? When they, when it came down, they recorded it and they looked back on the images and everything and they saw how fast it was traveling. They had a, a camera going a thousand frames per second. Right. And so this thing shoots up into space at 150,000 miles per hour and is still to this day circling in space somewhere. Oh my it's gosh. going faster than any satellite. That's pretty crazy and kind of a shame as well. Like one day, if it hasn't already, that's going to hit a distant star and it's going to create a war with whatever extraterrestrial life is out there. They're going to be like, hmm, this piece of iron and steel come from that way. And they're going to just fire back. Hey, if you haven't done so already, go ahead and like the video and subscribe to the channel. I only ask once per video and I make a video like this pretty much every day. In this video, this lady speaks the truth about kidney failure. Make sure you watch until the end and let me know what you think in the comments below. <laughs> I, I'm so pissed off right now. I, I mean, I'm highly pissed. Because here the whole time, I think that my kidneys have failed 
and that I need dialysis, right? Because that's what they told me. The whole time, the glomerulus and the tubal is was filled. And it's the glomerulus that then got clogged. And it needs to be unclogged. And can do that through just detoxes. Because you have to clean the urinary tract. In order to do that, you would have to go and drink 2.7 liters of water a day. Every day, no matter what. And I know they say they're getting fluid off of you. But the body naturally, through the glomerulus tube and the tubal, it, it, it's not that it's getting fluid off you. It's properly making you urinate so that you can get rid of toxins in the body. So the kidney is just the filter between the glomerulus and the tubal between the urinary tract and the bladder. Hmm. That explains everything to me. Now I get it. Now I understand it. Now I understand how come I got so much sicker on dialysis. I completely understand. It is not a blood issue. Yes, the adverse blood does work on cleaning toxins out of your body. But when the kidneys are not working properly, it's because of the urinary tract isn't working properly. So you have to get that urinary together in order to get the kidneys to work. That's how come dialysis don't return the function of the kidneys because it's not a kidney issue. It's a urinary tract issue. I could not figure that thing out. Why do we need a transplant to get better if you're giving me blood and you're saying the kidneys clean the blood? Because that's not all they do. They have seven different functions. But in order for anything to work in the kidney, empty thing, the urinary tract has to be working properly. And to do that, you need detoxes. Drinking 2.7 liters of water a day. You have to be intaking enough fluid into that urinary tract because urine is what gets rid of the toxins, phosphorus, potassium, minerals. It stores and get rid of them. What in the hell are they doing to us? This shit is blowing my mind. It's blowing my mind because it was the same thing when I got cancer and started chemo exact same thing that's how come they were willing to let me off of it i couldn't figure if you said that i'll die if i quit it and y'all die in two weeks why are you willing to let me be off of it why are you why, why are you willing to let me quit it couldn't figure that thing out because y'all know y'all ain't treating shit i couldn't figure out why i got a urinary tract infection and got so in sick and they said oh you got a uti and a kidney infection well, how'd I get both? I think it's because the catheter, right? So I'm like, okay, we need to get the catheter out. The whole time, it's the glomerul, the groom, the glom, glomerulus. Good Lord, I couldn't even say it. And the tubal that needs to be worked on. I couldn't figure this thing out. Like, what exactly is that machine doing? Because I'm watching it. How is it cleaning blood? Y'all, it, it ain't even doing nothing for the kidneys, period. Period. Dialysis ain't doing nothing for the kidneys. It's just doing something to the ventricle vein, which it turns into an artery on down the way that returns the blood back by the glomerulus and the tubal. Y'all, y'all, y'all just tell me. I'm so pissed right now. I can't wait till tomorrow to speak to the nephrologist. I can't wait. All y'all had to do was help me fix my urinary tract, and we, we th th this wouldn't have even been. I wouldn't have been this sick all this time. Y'all can't be serious. You can't be for real. I don't necessarily know if what she's saying is true, but I am a big believer in keeping your internal system flushed out by drinking tons of water. I, I'm a huge fan of drinking water. I, that's basically my main drink aside from coffee. I am a huge drinker of water. I can drink at least a liter to two liters a day. And that sounds like a lot, but in reality, I know people that can drink a two liter of soda in less than 20 minutes. So to be able to drink a two liter of water a day, I think is pretty easy if you just consume it as if you were consuming soda or tea or anything like that. I'm pretty certain it, it does seem 
tough, but it's really good for you. It can flush out the system depending on what water you're drinking. I would I stick personally to well water. I have no problems with it. I purify it myself, everything like that. And it, it I think I have a fairly healthy internal system personally. But I am not a doctor. I can't condone that information professionally. But I do recommend drinking a lot of water to keep your system flushed out. Yo. Yo, I fucking got it. I fucking got it. Right now, let's see if the up button moves it up. And the down button should move it down. And I should be able to. Oh, you wanker. I'm having that, I'm counting that. Hey, this is pretty interesting. He's got a few more videos online of this device that he's created. It is genuinely a tractor beam. Like he was able to control the distance between whatever that thing was in the center up and down. I'm pretty certain that this is a real video and that's interesting to see a actual handheld device that could potentially be used in the future for... Did you see that? <laughs> it could potentially be used in the future to help move greater objects if it gets perfected is a little bit larger than what it is currently but this is actually something impressive did you see how the moon is rusting i've heard about it so there's this kid that took the most high quality picture of the moon ever taken over like 2,000 images that he combined and you can clearly see that the moon is rusting and then i saw this on nasa research indicates the presence of hematite a form of rust that normally requires oxygen and water this has scientists puzzled hematite is a name that is derived from the greek word meaning blood all right joel crazy. 2 it says the sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the great and awesome day of the Lord comes and it shall come to pass that everyone who calls in the name of the Lord shall be saved. That's weird. It's throughout scripture, the moon turning to blood and like, what does that mean? So like the Bible, it was ultimately translated into Greek at one point, right? And the Greek word for blood is hematite, the same word that they use for this rust. Yeah. And so it's like the moon has hematite on it. Yeah. That's weird. It's all going to end soon, so you get better. End times is coming, my friend. That is very interesting. How are you able to get those compounds if those compounds aren't supposed to actually exist on the moon? It makes you wonder, is the moon really what people say it is, or is it something completely different? So this just came in. Check it out. From Mammoth Cave, Kentucky, federal hey, officials are investigating an incident involving at least one gunshot fired over the weekend at Mammoth Cave National Park that was prompted by an alleged sighting of Bigfoot. A spokesperson for the National Park said law enforcement rangers responded about 2 a.m. Sunday to an incident involving a person with a firearm at one of the park's backcountry campsites. And while the park did not release any additional information, a camper named Brad Ginn told News 5 or, that he and his girlfriend were there at the time. Ginn said the two went to sleep around 11 o'clock and woke up about 1 a.m. to people shining flashlights on their tent. The couple exited their tent to find a man and his young son approaching. According to Ginn, the man explained that something had destroyed his campsite and that he kept hearing strange sounds. So he was going to investigate because this was this is Bigfoot country. And Ginn's girlfriend claimed she heard the same shots. Uh, the man reportedly showed the couple his gun and told them they heard gunshots, they should run. Well, told them if they heard gunshots, they should run. Again, and his girlfriend returned to their tent, said about five to ten minutes later, they heard at least one gunshot. The man and his son returned to the couple's tent and stated that Bigfoot had emerged from the woods and approached him, so he fired his weapon. But due to the bizarre circumstances, Ginn said he and his girlfriend immediately packed up and left their campsite. That incident is still under investigation by park law enforcement officials.
I'm just gonna say that that Bigfoot looked like an individual wearing a blue jacket, and I really hope that they're okay and did not get shot. Well, it looks like they figured out how to reverse aging. Exhibit A, these two mice are the same age. This one over here, yeah, it looks like a grandpa mouse. This looks like a young spry mouse. They gave this one an experimental gene therapy. And so it's interesting to think that these new obelisk life forms that are infecting all of us, they're something that's not quite a virus, but it still has genetic information. It can give information to your cell that that might actually be responsible over the course of your lifetime for genetic changes. That research is coming out of Stanford University. They should probably talk to these guys over at Harvard with the mice. Because those nice people over at Harvard figured out that the reason we age is because our DNA gets misorganized and dysregulated and changes in a process known as epigenetics. They gave gene therapy to one of the mice, reverse aging in the mouse. Well, even if this new obelisk life form inside of us is causing those changes, well, it doesn't matter because we already figured out a way to undo them. And believe me, coming soon, you'll hear more about it. You think Jeff Bezos is going to let this one slide? Mm -hmm. He's going to be getting what this mouse got one day soon. What does that mean for our society when the billionaires can live forever? I'm surprised that they would even release this information to the public because of the reason of multimillionaires and billionaires that are definitely going to back this because they want to prolong their business. They want to be able to live forever to run their business and not let nobody succeed above them. I really don't know how to feel about that because I don't mind the fact of living forever, but the cost, that's going to be expensive and only the select few are going to be able to afford this in the first place. And um, um, also in the long-term events, what is it going to, how long is it going to last? For example, okay, it might reverse your, your age by 20 years, but how long does that last? Do, do you rapidly age if you don't keep this treatment and, you know, within five years you increase your age to 30 years if you don't maintain this treatment? I kind of feel like that's what it's going to be. But who knows? We'll see. Leave a comment down below on your thoughts. Because you don't know what you're saying. Why would I waste my time applying, uh, replying to something that I've already fucking went over a hundred times and you don't understand what you are saying? We live in an electromagnetic toregial field. There is no south pole. Your compass objectively, empirically, and scientifically concludes that the earth is a level plane with a fixed center source. Your compass, when you flip a switch for a current, your compass points to the current. It doesn't have to be a bar magnet. Claiming that it's a bar magnet is a false equivalency logical fallacy. Circling a compass with a fixed needle compass proves fucking nothing. We have a natural lodestone, a compass functioning properly because east and west are semicircles and circles. That's why your compass pivots. It is objective. The red half is objective. Your heading, your direction, your bezel, you sticking it up your fucking ass, it does not matter. The red half is the same for everyone, no matter what you do with your compass. When there's a fixed source in the center, your compass functions properly. Your compass will function properly with a fixed source in the center. If you add this static, all right, this is our south pole. Let's have a constant south pole now. Look. Look, it's not working. It's not working because we have two field acting on it at the same time. Get rid of our south pole that doesn't exist and has no evidence. Weird. Weird. Now our compass functions properly. Let's add the constant force of a south pole that doesn't exist. Compass does not work. Take away the south pole that doesn't exist. Compass works fine. Add the south pole.
Compass doesn't work. Take the style pole away. Compass works fine. Like fucking, how's not that hard? A compass is a single pole horizontal plane instrument for measuring semicircles and circles. It is the latitude on your map. Okay? It doesn't work when two polarity are acting on it at the same time. The, the needle is static. Okay? Look, I'm going five or six inches here. Both polarity acting on my needle at the same time. With your heading is subjective to only you. The compass is a constant force. It's constantly pulling the needle to the center. The source in the center. You see how much pivot is here when there is one field one polarity because that's how a compass fucking functions you going south doesn't change the fact that your compass needle red half is constantly being pulled to the source magnet okay that's why it doesn't work when there are two fields because it's a single field instrument a single pole instrument it doesn't work you don't use the white part of your fucking compass. This is the indicator. Very clearly identified as the indication. It's an analog instrument. It is the instrument that we use to determine latitude. Okay? Left and right is east and west like a clock. Okay? So what you're doing... Is trying to claim that a compass works with both pole acting on it at the same time. It does not. You know why it does not? Because a bar magnet is not what we live in. We live in a terrestrial field, first of all. Second of all, look, there is nothing in the middle. They zap this at both ends. Electric dipole moment. Opposing op uh, orientational polarization. There is nothing in the middle. It's not magnetic in the middle. Only the ends. A compass does not work with two opposing polarity field acting on it simultaneously. There are zero instruments for cartography that account for anything that has to do with the globe. There are zero objective measures, zero analog instruments to measure the globe with upside down curved fucking water. Hey, this guy really is passionate about his science and theory. Uh, sorry it was uh, really vulgar, um, but it was interesting nonetheless. He had some very good statements and facts to showcase here. So, I mean, I'm not going to argue with the fact that we could potentially be on a flat earth and that's the reason why all of the poles shift just towards that direction. Leave a comment down below on what you guys think. I know there's a lot of flat earth believers in there and I'm okay with that because I'm more lying on the fence of it myself. So type 2 diabetes was eliminated from animals in 1957 just by supplementation of nutrition. Then 20 years later, they also proved it in humans. That was in 1977. But the medical monopoly, they covered their eyes. We don't want to know. We don't want to know. And if they don't accept it, and the AMA doesn't accept it, then they can't promote it to you. And you're so programmed to listen to your primary care physician that you just, you just, get marched to slaughter. Type two diabetes makes way too much money for the medical monopoly for them to tell you how to reverse something that's so easy to reverse. I do know some people that have diabetes and they do live a healthy life and they just have type one diabetes. So it's not impossible to get diabetes by eating healthy, but I think that it helps eliminate it a lot faster if you do eat healthy. This device is able to generate energy in a self-sufficient way thanks to the power of magnetism. 
and the cleverness of several patents that have been hidden from the public for decades. The rotor generates the force that drives the motor thanks to neodymium magnets and a special alloy that can keep the system running almost forever. In the videos on our channel, you can watch the full assembly, planes, instructions, and information that has been hidden to the world until now. This is pretty fascinating. I enjoy this type of content because I do believe that there is a way out there to make a perpetual motor somehow. This is a pretty neat device. I don't know if it's real or not. There could be batteries hidden somewhere. Uh, there could be uh, a trick to the eye that I'm not catching. But to me, this device looks pretty accurate to what a perpetual machine should be as far as having an alternator and a generator to power itself. It's very interesting. Let me know what you guys think. You think this is a hoax or do you think that this is actually something that is real? Guys, the UFO seen above North Conway has now touched down in Boston. Take a listen to this. Well, you're going to think I'm crazy. It's something that just went from right to left to right in a blink and then flashed the lights three or four times and vanished. Okay, that might be those two aircraft. I'm not sure. Uh, this thing went 180 degrees in like a second. And just in case you're not up on your aviation, planes that go 180 degrees in a second don't exist. Oh, goodness. Uh, all right. Yeah, let me know if you see it again. We'll make a report. Uh, well, the details, it literally went from one coast to the other uh, in front of us, and then it went up like 30 degrees, it turned off its lights or whatever it had. It looked like it's a bright orangey thing. Bright orangey thing. In Boston, could this be a traffic cone? And then since we spoke to you last, it flashed us like three, four times, but it's still, we are still looking at it now. I got to say, this guy sounds very composed for a man staring dead on at a UFO. The 80 miles in front of us, and it looks like it's coming, I don't know, it's flashing towards us, but it is definitely not an airplane. It doesn't have the strobe lights or anything on it. It's just this bright orange going on and off. Yep, this definitely wasn't an airplane. Renegade traffic cone, giant illuminated dunk sign, multicolored water tower, or UFO. Nobody really knows, but what we do know, folks, is that there's some strange things happening in the skies of New England. This is a very interesting thing. I've heard about the Boston UFO, and I've heard that this UFO was potentially in North Carolina, and I find this really fascinating but unfortunate that we do not have aircrafts that have basically like dash cams. Why do we not equip aircrafts with cameras on the wings, on the nose, on the tail end so that it can be documented whenever something happens outside of the plane? There should be a way to record what happens around the plane. I, I feel like we live in a time now where if we have vehicles that have 15 cameras on them for under the vehicle on the sides, the top and the front and the bottom and above the vehicle, then we should definitely have cameras on planes so that when they get these reports from the pilots, there's evidence and we know that the pilots aren't making false accusations. We're supposed to drink water now. When did that start? When did that start? Do you remember any time in your entire life of any moment in childhood that some adult told you, hey, got to drink water? I wasn't told a single time in my entire childhood, hey, got to drink water. It's important. Water's important for you. No, my guy. No. I'm talking every single sport, every single season running in the summer nine ten hours a day in the blistering heat not one single adult told me drink water i thought you only drink water like after gym and you get a big swig of water and then go about your business i thought you need one big gulp of water that lasts you all year did not know you were supposed to be drinking this much water then there are like eight glasses I'm like eight glasses of water in a day. I didn't drink eight glasses of water through the 80s, 90s, early 2000s combined. 
Now they're saying a day? When did that happen? When did that happen? These kids out here better be superhuman. Was that the secret? Drinking water? Because I promise you, me and my friends, no, no. We were bringing Mountain Dews to sports practices. I'm talking I had Kool-Aid in a water bottle at my sports practices. Water? Never drank it. Now? All the time. Never ends. Drink your water. I think that this is just a joke, I hope. Is there people out there that really never drank water like that? Because that's crazy if so. I mean, this individual looks fairly healthy for not drinking water all the time. So I can't say that he's living an unhealthy life, but it makes it a little hard to believe. If that was CGI, it's very well done CGI because that looked pretty good. And it makes me wonder, you know, any time that there's any major storms or hurricanes, what if that is how extraterrestrial or UFOs or even governmental equipment gets moved? How that's how they they move their equipment without being seen is by hiding in the storm itself, potentially is what's even causing the storm. But that's an interesting fact. I think there's a movie based off of that. It's War of the Worlds, I think. All right, guys, I'm going to go ahead and end the video here. And with that being said, have a good day.